Hi guys, this video is going to be on the different types of quadrilaterals. Now I find the most useful way to think of the types of quadrilaterals is as a family tree. So you just got to remember who's related to whom. So let's start with the most basic quadrilateral. The most basic quadrilateral I'm sure we all know is any four-sided shape. So because it's a very general family, there's only one important thing about all quadrilaterals, and that is that the angles in a quadrilateral will add to 360 degrees. Okay, so what happens if we take a quadrilateral and we add one pair of parallel sides? That forms a shape called a trapezium. Now, a trapezium is a type of quadrilateral, which means everything that's true in a quadrilateral is true in a trapezium. So a trapezium has four sides, the angles add to 360, and it's got this extra property of one pair of parallel sides. Okay, now, if we take a trapezium and we add a second pair of parallel sides, you get probably one of the most interesting quadrilaterals, and that is a parallelogram. So the way this family tree works is a parallelogram is a type of trapezium, which is a type of quadrilateral. So everything that's true in a quadrilateral and a trapezium is true in a parallelogram and extra properties. Now a parallelogram has lots of extra properties. First of all, the both pairs of opposite angles are equal. Second of all, both pairs of opposite sides are equal. And thirdly, a parallelogram has diagonals. Now, as you can see from this picture, diagonals of a parallelogram are not necessarily equal because a parallelogram generally lies on its side, which means you have a shorter diagonal and a longer diagonal. But what is important about these diagonals is that they bisect each other. So that means they cut each other in half. So each diagonal is cut perfectly in half. So if I just write down these new properties, opposite angles are equal, opposite sides are equal, and diagonals bisect. Now, all of those properties are going to be true in any parallelogram. Now, you get very special types of parallelogram. So if I take a parallelogram and I add the corner angles being 90 degrees, I get a very specific parallelogram called a rectangle. Now, a rectangle, being a parallelogram, has all the properties of a parallelogram, and then it has some extra properties. So for example, both pairs of opposite sides will be equal. As you can see, both pairs of opposite angles are equal, because they're all equal to 90. And my diagonals will definitely bisect. But a rectangle has an extra property with its diagonals. Because what's happened to the parallelogram is if you, you've almost straightened him up, he's no longer slanting, you can see from the picture that it makes sense that my diagonals will be equal. So when they bisect, they actually cut into four equal parts, because the diagonals are equal in length. So the extra property that a rectangle has is diagonals are equal. Now if you go back to parallelogram, and instead of adding 90 degree corners, what happens if you add all four sides equal? Then you get a shape called a rhombus. Now a rhombus is a type of parallelogram. So everything that's true in a parallelogram is true in a rhombus, but these four equal sides give it some extra qualities. So I've drawn in my diagonals. Now, of course, because this is a type of parallelogram, my diagonals will bisect. Now you can see those diagonals are still not equal because this isn't a rectangle. But these diagonals of a rhombus have some special things. And those are the diagonals will bisect at 90 degrees. That's not true in a parallelogram. It's only true in a rhombus. And your diagonals will bisect. They'll cut in half all your corner angles. So those extra properties are diagonals bisect at 90 and your diagonals bisect your corner angles. Now, if you marry a rhombus and a rectangle, and you take all of those properties and make them true in one shape, that shape is the most important quadrilateral of all. So if you take a rectangle and you add four equal sides, or if you take a rhombus and you add 90 degree corners, you get a square. So the nice thing about a square is every single quality you can possibly imagine is true in a square. It's a type of parallelogram, a type of rectangle, and a type of rhombus. So everything we've written on the page so far is true in a square. So it has both pairs of opposite sides equal. But it's a rhombus, so it has all four sides equal. It has all four corner angles 90 because it's a rectangle. It has diagonals that are equal because it's a rectangle. Hence, they bisect and you have four equal parts. It also has diagonals bisecting at 90 because it's a rhombus. And it also bisects your corner angles. So all your corner angles are cut in equal halves. Now if you go back up to the top and you take a quadrilateral, and instead of going down to a trapezium, what happens if we go off to the left and we add something different? 
What happens if we add two pairs of adjacent? So adjacent means next to each other. So two pairs of sides that are next to each other equal. Then you get what we call a kite. Now a kite doesn't have too many properties, but it does have diagonals which are clearly not equal because it's not a rectangle. These diagonals intersect. Now I'm not saying bisect. They intersect at 90 degrees. Now I'm not saying bisect because as you can see the longer diagonal is not cut in half but the shorter diagonal is. Now the way in which to understand this, this quadrilateral family tree, the easiest way, is to remember who's related to whom. So you start with a quadrilateral and if you go to the left you get a kite. Now if you add four equal sides to a kite you actually go down to a rhombus. So this is very weird, but a rhombus is actually a type of kite. So let's have a look. If you have a quadrilateral and you add one pair of sides parallel, you'll get a trapezium. I can then add extra properties to get a parallelogram. So a parallelogram is a type of trapezium, which is a type of quadrilateral. Now you get specific types of parallelogram. A rectangle is a type of parallelogram, and a rhombus is a type of parallelogram. And as a square is a type of rectangle, rhombus, parallelogram, trapezium, and quadrilateral. Then if I go up to the side, I get a kite, and there's a very specific type of kite, which is called a rhombus. So this might make a little bit more sense after we look at each shape individually. So let's very quickly look at the properties of a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral, one property. Angles add to 360 degrees. Now as you know in geometry, whenever you use a fact, you need to give a geometry reason. So our geometry reason for this is going to be sum of angles in a quad, which is very logical. Okay, let's look at a trapezium. A trapezium is a quadrilateral, so the angles will add to 360, but it is a specific type of quadrilateral with one pair of opposite sides parallel. Okay, let's look at a parallelogram. A parallelogram has two pairs of opposite sides parallel. It has two pairs of opposite sides equal. Now, if you're ever going to use these facts, our geometry reason is going to be opposite sides of palm. Palm is the shortening for parallelogram. It has two pairs of opposite angles equal. So if we use this fact, we're going to say opposite angles of a palm. And the diagonals bisect. If we use this fact, we're going to say diags of palm. So these geometry reasons are largely self-explanatory. So if I draw in all my properties on my parallelogram, now, I need to remember that these properties are true in any parallelogram. So a rectangle is a type of parallelogram. So everything that's true in a parallelogram is true in a rectangle. So two pairs of opposite sides parallel and equal. Opposite angles equal. Diagonals bisect. But it has extra properties. And these are four corner angles 90 and diagonals are equal. Now that particular one is very important because if you're ever trying to prove something's a rectangle, that's the easiest way to prove it. The only quadrilateral where your diagonals are equal is a rectangle. So if I draw this in on my picture, my diagonals are equal, and if I ever use this in a geometry reason, I would need to say diags of rect. Now let's look at a rhombus. A rhombus is a type of parallelogram, so all the properties, two pairs of opposite sides parallel and equal, opposite angles equal, diags bisect, all of that is automatically true. But what extra things does it have? It has all four sides equal, and it has diagonals bisecting at 90, and it has diagonals bisecting our corner angles. So let me draw that in on my shape, diagonals bisect. They bisect at 90, they bisect my corner angles. Now if you ever use those last two and you want to explain in a geometry reason, you can just say diags of a rhombus. Now the nicest one is a square because you never have to worry. Everything's true in a square. So I've written in green all the properties of a parallelogram which are true in a square because a square is a type of parallelogram. Then a square is a type of rhombus which means all the properties of a rhombus which I've written in orange, are true in a square. And then a square is a type of rectangle, which means all the properties of a rectangle are true in a square. So everything you can imagine is true in a square. So I've drawn them in, both pairs of opposite sides parallel, all four sides equal, 
diagonals are equal and they bisect, they bisected 90 and they bisect corner angles. Now I didn't write this on my other diagram, but doesn't that mean that the corner angles will all be 45? That makes complete sense. Lastly, let's look at a kite. A kite has angles adding to 360 because it's a type of quad. It has two pairs of adjacent sides equal. It has diagonals that meet at 90 degrees and the shorter diagonal is bisected. So if we look at our picture, we have bisected, sorry, not bisected, intersected at 90 degrees and the shorter one bisected. Now, if you ever need to use that information, you can just say diags of a kite. And we also already have noted that we can always use the reason sum of angles in a quadrilateral. Now, the thing I want to point out here is that I've never thought of a rhombus as a type of kite or a square as a type of kite, but it really is because all of these properties are true in a rhombus and in a square. And therefore, a rhombus and a square are actually a type of kite. They just have extra properties which make them look slightly different. Now though that's the quadrilateral family tree which is really complicated and it's quite difficult to remember all these properties. So I find that picture in the beginning the easiest thing to remember. How they're all related, what do you have to add to a shape in order to make this new shape. So try and remember all these geometry reasons, write summaries, draw each shape, label in all the, all the properties because it will be really, really useful for the rest of your maths.